Hello, thank you for choosing to join us again this week. Hope that your week has been good and that you're looking forward to um, a holiday season coming up very shortly. Again, hopefully you are well and those who you love and who are in your family are also doing well and are safe and healthy. Um, this is the third um, installment or message, if you will, in a series entitled God Gives. And, and we've already looked at God gives through his word and God gives through his love. And today we're going to be spending some time considering God gives through his people. The first two lessons that we've looked at probably were relatively comfortable for everybody to hear. I mean, kind of like the, the baby birds in the nest that are just kind of waiting for mama bird to come and feed them. You know, we, we can just kind of sit back and, and receive whatever was given to us in those first two, um, those first two lessons. Now with Chris, Christmas coming, maybe you can remember too, as a child, that you would just kind of sit there and wait for either dad or mom to grab presents out from under the tree, and you're just sitting there waiting for them to hand them to you so you can open them. So there wasn't a whole lot of, of things you had to do other than just sit and wait. Well, this week, a little different. This week's lesson really, uh, it may not be as comfortable because really it's going to be, instead of sitting and waiting for something to be given to us, we, you and I, are the ones who are going to be doing the giving really as an extension of God's love and goodness. God gives through his people. In one sense, though, we still are the recipients of opportunities to serve as God's instruments, opportunities that really should humble us and motivate us to be the very best we can be when it comes to serving others on behalf of God. There's a song that is written from a, from a prayer uh, entitled, Lord, Make Me Thine Instrument. And its message really clearly indicates that you and I, as God's instruments, can bring to a world in turmoil, lives in despair, and souls in distress, a message of hope. And we can also share and deliver God's love, His mercy, and His compassion to others. So I want to share those words with you from this song. It says, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Make me an instrument of thy peace. It would be easy for, for us to, to say, but I'm too young, or I'm too old, or I'm too busy or I'm too weak, or it's, I'm too important, or, or I'm too new. But really, none of those excuses or reasons really apply. I think in order to, for God's gifts to be delivered, we, you and I, are called to be His instruments, His tools for dispensing His wonderful message. The blessings that, that we have already received are great, but there are other people who are still waiting to receive those blessings. And the way that they may receive them is by our hands. Now, while it's possible to ignore the needs of people around us or even to miss obvious opportunities that are in front of us because of our busy lives and schedules, I think committed followers of Jesus just won't do that. In fact, committed followers see through the eyes of Jesus. They recognize those in need and engage in being the bearers of God's gifts of mercy, goodness, and love. I think in addition to being committed followers, whenever we're presented with opportunities to deliver God's gifts to others, we also must be prayerful followers. And I think here's why. Prayerful followers use the power of prayer 
to remove obstacles that hinder our ability to serve and to strengthen our resolve to be the pipeline through which God's gifts of peace and comfort can flow. When we have those opportunities to be God's instruments, we need to be very prayerful about those opportunities and about how we are going to deliver those opportunities as his instruments. But I think there's still more that we must be in order for God to give through us, through his people. We must be sensitive followers. So as a sensitive followers of the word of God, I think sensitive followers of the word of God produce sensitivity to the needs of others. By knowing God's message, we come to know our mission. And that mission is to serve others and one another as God's hands of compassion. So I think it's important that we are as committed followers, as prayerful followers, as sensitive followers, that we embrace the opportunity we have to be able to be God's instruments. But I think uh, the challenge is not really to point to someone else to, to be that instrument or to look the other way in order you know, to avoid the challenge in front of us or to sit back and rest on some past act of kindness and say, I've already done my part. No. I will say this, though, a chapel speaker, I'll share this illustration with you, a chapel speaker was speaking to a group of Christian high school students, and he, his topic was, had to do with the lack of the Good Samaritan spirit in the world today. And to help illustrate his point, he told of an incident that he experienced in New York City. He said, during the lunch hour, I walked with a friend toward a nearby restaurant when we saw lying on the street a helpless fellow human who had collapsed. The speaker paused briefly, and then he completed his story. Not only had nobody bothered to stop and help this poor fellow, but on our way back after lunch, we saw him still lying in the same spot. I think maybe the speaker missed the point of his own message, don't you? In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus challenged his followers to be different. He, to possess qualities that in some circles may be viewed as weaknesses, but, but in God's sight are the right qualities for those who can be used to serve as his hands, his instruments, his avenue for giving, you and I. How better to prepare to be used by God as the deliverers of his gifts than to be the people Jesus introduced to his early followers. So I want us to, to take a look at, at Matthew 5, verses 3 through 16. I want to share that with you. I think it's important sometimes that we just take God's message right out of his word and we listen to it being read. And so this section, some, are, some people know it as the Beatitudes. But Jesus is speaking and it's his beginning of his Sermon on the Mount. And so I... I want you to just kind of listen to what Jesus was instructing his early followers and the people that were listening to him, how they should be. And it was to be different. Different than what they're used to or they were used to at, in their lives. Different than what they'd seen even from other religious leaders. So here in Matthew chapter 5, I'll begin with verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out 
and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Jesus was given these instructions, and the people who heard him were hearing something perhaps they'd never heard before. I think the content there of what Jesus was talking about really aligns well with for us to be effective instruments for God's goodness and to be effective instruments so that God can give through us whatever it is that he has to give to others. Perhaps John Wesley um, was really attempting to summarize what I just read from Jesus when he wrote this. He said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. As I look back over the years here at the North Park Church of Christ, I'm reminded of how the opportunities to serve as God's instruments, as God's hands, have been embraced. And I wanted to just mention some of those and, and really as a more of a reminder of things that not only have been done and are being done, but just as a reminder to each of us, no matter whether we're a member at North Park or we attend services at another church, or whether or not we're just a member of society and we're trying to do good things for people, that there are opportunities out there. We just have to have our eyes open to see those opportunities. And so I want to share some of those that, that I'm familiar with here at North Park. I don't think it's an accident that the Helping Hands Pantry continues to serve members of our community as God's hands or as God's instruments by providing for physical needs that they have. And, and they're also, while they're doing that, the, the volunteers at the Helping Hands Pantry, in addition to, to providing those physical needs, you know, they're, they're demonstrating love and compassion for those who really are needing more than just a meal. They also need hope and dignity during challenging times like we have now and like they experience. Prior to the COVID outbreak, uh, the Essential House was also serving those who come to the pantry by, by providing clothing and household items to them and, and because it would fill another need that so many people have who can't afford to go out and buy things brand new. I think once the virus has passed, I, I see that work continuing because it's a blessing to many. At this time of year, many children in our area and probably in many areas are going to benefit here, though, from God's hand gift shop. Again, we're embracing the opportunity to serve as God's hands, as God's instruments, by providing gifts to children in our community. Through the partnership with the mayor of McChesney Park and, and the generosity of businesses and, and community members and, and members of the church family here, the parents and grandparents of 300 or more children in our immediate area will be able to give gifts and bring joy because of the opportunity to serve. And it's that opportunity is not being ignored by those who volunteer and who are working to make God's, hand gift, God's hands gift shop possible. And again, in spite of all the different challenges that we have, that that service, that ministry is going to continue this year. I also think about the blanket ministry here, another great work that answers the call to be God's instruments, to bring peace, comfort, and joy to others through the gift of, of a warm and comfortable blanket, whether it's to someone who's in the hospital or just got out of the hospital, someone who's dealing with illness at home, perhaps somebody new to our community or our church family, or someone who just needs some encouragement. Those blankets that are made here really do serve a great purpose. And I'm, I'm glad that 
that we have people who have the ability and the willingness to do that as part of the blanket ministry. It's also encouraging when there are people who are dealing with sickness and, and loss within our church family that, that meals are provided that, that bring relief and reduce stress. And often it doesn't even involve uh, a planned effort, but rather just the caring of individuals who will make a meal and take it to a person's house to just encourage them and provide for their needs. Responding is God's instruments. There are, another, there are a number of other opportunities in which God gives through his people, whether it be supporting uh, a group like Schultz Lewis Children's Home or, or sponsoring relief efforts in, in Haiti or Honduras or another area of our country or another part of the world, or being that individual who, who just simply reaches out to a lonely neighbor to try to help them through their loneliness. All of these and, and more enable us to serve as God's instruments, enable us to be the deliverer of God's gifts to others. In Acts chapter 9, after Saul had been blinded on the road to Damascus, he was taken to Damascus, and there a disciple named Ananias was instructed by the Lord in a vision to go to the house of a man named Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man there from Tarsus named Saul. Well, Ananias replied to the Lord this way. He said, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. Now I want you to listen to the response by the Lord to Ananias. Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Verses 15 and 16 of Acts chapter 9. God took this man Saul, who had been wreaking havoc among the followers of Jesus in the first century. He took him and said, he is my chosen instrument. He's going to do what I need him to do. He's going to proclaim my name, the name of Jesus, to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. Well, in spite of all that Saul had done up to that point, and Saul's name would later be changed to Paul, whatever he had done in opposition to those who were following Jesus, God and, and Jesus saw him as someone who could be used for their glory, for, to, to spread the good news of Jesus. If God can take somebody with Saul's background and use him as an instrument of goodness, why can't God take you and I to serve as his instrument, as his hands, delivering his gifts to others? I think he can. We just have to be open to those opportunities and accepting of that call to be his instruments. You know, in order for God to, to give through his people, his people must be committed and prayerful and sensitive. We talked about that earlier. Well, we need to be committed to serving as his instruments. We need to be prayerful in seeking his strength. And we need to be sensitive to understanding his message. And we need to do those things so that we can be deliverers of his mercy, his goodness, his compassion, and his love. That same Paul that I just spoke of, who once stood in strong opposition to, to everything that Jesus taught and to all who followed him, would write this next passage in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 18. We're going to look at it on the screen. I want you to, to listen as I read it, and you read it along with me. But this is Paul, who had been Saul, who had been persecuting Christians. Now he's a changed man, and he's God's instrument. And listen to how he describes people should be, followers of Jesus should be, you and I should be, as we serve as God's instruments. Love must be sincere. 
hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be de devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Romans 12, 9 through 18. That last statement, live at peace with everyone. Remember the beginning of the song that I read to you, Make Me Thine Instrument. Make me thine instrument of thy peace. Let's pray together. Lord, I just want to ask your blessings on all who are, who are listening, who are watching uh, this message. I pray, first of all, that, that this message is pleasing to you and that uh, it, is, it is something that you want us to embrace. I pray for each one of us that we will be willing to serve as your instruments, that we will be able to help you give while we deliver those gifts that you have, that you bless so many people with. I pray that you help us to be committed followers, prayerful followers, sensitive followers, as we go about serving you and serving others. Watch over and care for us instill in us the desire to be your servants every day. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to conclude our time together today with the York College Concert Choir, and they're going to be singing the song, Lord, Make Me Thine Instrument. I want you to just sit there and listen to the words, but listen to the chorus as they sing. It's a beautiful version of the song. And I just want you to think about how you can be God's instrument. And I pray that we're always going to be open to those opportunities that can enable God to give through his people, through you and I. Let's have a blessed week. Thank you.